Well, Sabbath P, it's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahweh Shua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest and made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any, any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Different, uh, different, uh, turn, turning off the heat downstairs. Or turn you ain't got it down. I mean, light. you ain't got to like, you ain't got to, you know, you ain't got to do it because, you know what I'm saying, I know that, you know what I'm saying, you work so hard. You know what I'm saying, I wouldn't want you to, you know what I'm saying, break a nail, turn, turn that thing off. Let's, uh, let's open up to, uh, what you want to open up to? Let's do Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Got to cover a little book today. We didn't cover much book last week. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 8. We're going to pick up at verse 16. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these people that teach the book, you know what I'm saying? You always got to line them up. Before you want to hear the book, you got to make sure it line up. It's Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Let's see what the book says. Bind up the testimony. They say bind up the testimony. What does it mean? What does that mean when they say bind? You got something to say bind. What does that mean? Trap it. That mean that thing. You better hold that thing darn together. What's wrong with you? Don't let that thing darn slip in for you. Bind that thing. Grab it. You know what I'm saying? Bind up the testimony. You wrap it up. Right? Hold it. Right? Bind up the testimony. What's going to happen to it? Seal the law among my disciples. That means you got to seal it. And guess how you, who going to seal it? Among my disciples. It's going to be among the darn disciples. Where it say among the Christians, yeah, that's about to take it. Mm -hmm. among the Muslims, among the Jewish people, the Messianic Jews. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You tell me, don't tell me about a Messianic Jew. I don't want to hear that mess, that nonsense. The man said, "Still it amongst my what?" Disciples. I got that. What I'm gonna sit here? What, what I'm gonna sit here and try to make up my own little old oh, still it among the Pentecostal church? Mm -hmm. You've never read it. All right, let's keep going. And I will wait upon the Lord that hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Uh-huh. Behold, I am the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwells in Mount Zion. He said, I am the children which the Lord has given me are for what? Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. I don't know who this could be that's talking. He said, I, and not just me, the one who the Most High God has given me, guess what we for? Signs and wonders. I wish I could remember. I wish I could remember. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know. Let me see if my brain. I can't, I remember Yahushua was talking to his disciples. disciples, and he was telling the disciples, he said, go out and baptize people, and what would follow them? Signs and wonders. Huh? Signs and wonders, Signs and wonders would follow them. Specifically, they would be able to raise people from the dead. They'd be able to drink poison and it not hurt them. All types of stuff. Or poison is taken and not hurt. All types of stuff. That would happen to them. He said, I and the children that are with me are for signs and wonders. This is Yahushua talking. Let's keep going. Watch this. He said, bind up the testimony amongst the disciples. All right? Seal it up amongst, amongst my, my disciples. Then he says, I and the children... That, that was given to me by the Lord? Oh, yeah, we for signs and wonders, right? That means you, you're supposed to pay attention when we get to moving. All right, let's keep going. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep. So when these people try to take you astray, when well, they try to get you to get the little crystal rocks and hang it around your darn neck or put it in your out, they get you to burn and darn saved, right? When these people to get talking about, oh, yeah, why don't you go to that person to read your palm? They can tell you what your, what your dead mama thinking, right? When they get to tell you all these things and try to get you out of the way, he said, what happened? Should not a people seek unto their God? So, I mean, the Most High God is a logical, this is a logical guy we're dealing with. He's saying, it makes sense that a person would seek something. Right? I mean, he, 
I'm not going to tell you not to seek. You going to seek your God. So now, if I'm right here, talking about God, right? If God right there, and then you go seek on to a familiar spirit instead of God, what does that make that familiar spirit? Should not the people seek on to their God? It makes sense. He does. It makes sense you seek on to your God. Go ahead. Let's see. For the living to the for the living to the dead, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That got that. Right? That is how we have to think. We have to be able to look and say, you know what? I mean, it sounds like you're teaching something, brother, but but you're teaching online over the book. Right? You can't prove it out with the I mean, sure, you can probably take a little verse, you know what I'm saying? Read that one little verse out of context. Do a little voodoo, make people think you're talking about the book. You can't, you can't teach me if you can't pre preach out of the book. If you can't line it up in a book consistently. I'm not talking about just take, oh, this is what First Peter say. All right, that's nice. I like what First Peter says. That's good. But now I need you to go ahead and line that up. I need you to stack that up. You know what I need you to do? I need you to go to Isaiah chapter 28 now. We, we didn't read Isaiah chapter 8. Now I need you to go Isaiah chapter 28. We're going to try to figure out what, because I just want to know, like, how does this thing play out? How does it work? Right? We came here to get an understanding of the book. Been too long, a lot of people just playing patty cake. Right. See here and going with some tradition that's darn passed down from generation to generation. They feel good about it too. So My great 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 grandfather taught me this. Man, your great great grandfather, that man gonna go to darn hell if he keep playing. Oh, he already did. Oh, I got that. You know what I'm saying? However he died, that's where he at. What we gonna do with it? What am I supposed to do? Lie? No, the thing ain't the truth. What we gonna do? We got dealing truth. They ain't got to line up. Law and the testimony. What's the testimony? We know what the law is. What's the law? law is, uh, first five books of Moses. We look at Genesis all the way to Deuteronomy. That's the law. They say the testimony. What's that? Everything else. Everything else. Everything else is testifying to God. Right? He said, according to the law and the testimony, guess what? If you don't line up with that, ain't no truth. There ain't no light in that man. That man running in the barn mouth. Ain't no light in him. No, he can't take you no can't show you nothing. Just darkness. Confusion. Right? Let's hear about it. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 28. Give me verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? He said, who is he going to teach knowledge to? And whom shall he make to understand the doctrine? And who's going to understand the doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Okay. For precept must be upon precept. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line, here little and there little. Mm -hmm. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Yeah. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Uh-huh. And this is the refreshing. But what? Yet they would not hear. So the word of the Lord was unto them? But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. Uh-huh. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line, here little and there little. For what reason? That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. So we read this and it's very clear for us. He's laying it out. He tells us, we're going to read it again. Don't worry. We had to go through it real fast just so we can understand. Now we're going to go through it real slow, starting at verse 9. Watch what it says. Whom shall he teach knowledge? He said, who is he going to? He's asking the question, right? It's God talking. Who is he going to teach knowledge to, right? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And who is he going to make to understand that doctrine, that doctrine, that knowledge, that teaching, right? Who? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. What, what would be weaned from milk and drawn from breast? A baby, a, a toddler, a kid. You know what I'm saying? You wean a, a kid. It's a kid. This is a baby, a kid. He said, who going who gonna to understand this, this message, this doctrine? Right? Is it going to be the kids? Is it going to be the babies? Right? He asked that question. Why? Let's see what he said next. For precept must be upon precept. Okay. So he said, in order to do this, he said, who is it going to be? The babies? Right? He's asking, what, who is it going to be? The babies? Because... Because precept, I thought somebody getting the darn wolf, but I'm gonna say I like that. You know what I'm saying? He said because precept got to be upon precept, right? You gotta be able to take this precept. What's a precept? Yeah. Oh goodness! So he said, oh no, now we gotta connect some stuff. A precept is a what? Yeah. Where can you find commandments? In the law. So then the man told us. He said, to the what? To the law. Into the what? That's the law. So. You he, then then the man come back in twenty eight and say precept upon precept. So that means you got to put commandment on top of commandment. 
Commandments are found in the law, which man already told you to the law and to the testimony. So you got to put the commandment on top of another commandment. Commandment on top of another commandment. What else? Line upon line, line upon line. Line upon line. So now you moved on from the commandment. Now guess what you're dealing with? The testimony. Then you got to take this line from the testimony and this line from the testimony. You got to put them things together. And what else? Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. I wonder what the here and there is. I mean, I could be talking the Old Testament and the New Testament. You got to take a little bit from here and a little bit from there. There's some commandments in the New Testament too. Right? You got to take a little bit from here, a little bit from there. You got to take a line from here and a line from there and put them. Then you got to put this commandment and that command and then kind of put. And when you put them all together, guess what? Hold we got. Grab uh, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Give me verse 50. It's Matthew chapter 13 verse 50. I ain't got to tell y'all what we got if we put it all together. Why don't y'all sure tell you? This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 50. Maybe I want 49. Or 51. Mm -hmm. 52. 52. Is it with the 52 of what I want? Mm -hmm. That's where I want to start? That's, that's the meat of it. You want to start before that? Uh, I don't know. So, 50, 52 is good or 51? 52 is good. All right. So this is uh, Matthew... Chapter 13, verse 52. Then he said unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. Nah, yeah, I, want, I want 51. Okay. And Yahshua said unto them, Have you understood all these things? Right? He asked them a question. Have you guys understood? He just got done teaching them a whole bunch of parables. If we look at the beginning, we ain't got to grab it. Yeah, it made me want to grab it, though. If we look at the beginning, oh, we got to grab it. I can't help myself. Grab this thing. Grab, uh, grab Matthew chapter, chapter 13, verse 1. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. Then we're going to jump back down to Matthew chapter 13, verse 51. Then after we read that, we're going to jump all the way back to Isaiah chapter 28. And we're going to start at about verse 10, 11. You know what I'm saying? This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. Watch what the book says. And the great multitudes were gathered together upon him, unto uh -huh. him, so that he went into a ship and sat. And their whole multitude, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. So if a great multitude was gathered onto someone, what were they doing at that point? Following. They're what? Following. They're following them at that point, right? And who, who exactly are they following? The Messiah. the Messiah. You know what I'm saying? What were the Christians called? Probably Christ. Yeah. So they, they following Christ, according to them. Followers of Christ. Another word for that is a Christian. So we look at it. You had these people lining up. They, they rushing toward the boat. They like, okay, you know what I'm saying? They gathered onto them, them being followers. What they following there for? What do you think they, they there for? Like, to play play games? The signs, the wonder. They looking to learn. They want to know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's good? They trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's this new thing that's being taught? You know what I'm saying? Like, this guy sound pretty wise. Like, I want to follow you. I want to know what you're talking about. They going there. They not going there to kill them or assassinate them or... Are trying to be evil. They go in there because they want to know what he's talking about, right? So they go. These followers of Christ, right? These followers of the Messiah. They head up there. They head up there. They 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 try to figure out what he's talking about. They crowded at the boat, right? Then the man say, the man say, hold on, let's see what he say. The great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went to a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. Uh -huh. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. So he started to speak unto them in parables. What's a parable? A uh, riddle. Dark saying. It's a dark saying, right? It's like a riddle. Right? So now let's jump on down to what? Verse 10, verse 11. Hmm. 10. Verse 10? Yeah. All right. Look at verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why do you speak to these people in parables, they said. Right? He, the disciples, they identified the disciples, one group, came unto him and asked, Why are you speaking to them in parables? So I'm a disciple. What happened? That thing's not painful. So the disciples said, why are you speaking to them in parables? So the disciples saw clearly, this is two different groups, right? 
We not one of the people that multitudes that just follow him. We disciples. They knew that about themselves. They like, why are you speaking to all them, them Christians like that in parable? I don't understand. Let's see what it says. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But given to who, though? The disciples. So now it makes sense why the book say, Sit, bind the testimony and seal it amongst who? My disciples. Then he come back later and he say, I and the children who are with me are given for what? Signs and wonders. These people that mess with this Bible, guess what? They're not going to be able to do that. You know why? They don't know how to put line on top of line. Precept the darn on top of precept. You look at it, when you teach the Bible, you got to make sure the whole thing is consistent. You can't just pick up, just, I mean, just pick up a random page. We don't come back here. Just pick up any random page. I don't care what it is. Just pick it up. You know what I'm saying? Give me something good, too. Just random. You ain't even got to read it first. You know what I'm saying? Just randomly just pick up a page. In the book. matter of fact, you know what I'm saying? You pick one. Just something random. You know what I'm saying? Just see what it is. You know what I'm saying? Make sure it's wild, too. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you what these Christians do. You got to read it first. You grab me something random. Yeah. No, we get Matthew right now. Give me something else. You know what I'm saying? Get creative. Just, you know, you know how the Christian do when you know what I'm saying? You're going through something in your life. You a Christian, you're going through something in your life. You know what? You ain't picked up your Bible. Got dust on it. You ain't picked up that Bible. You know how people got the Bible as like decoration in their house? Got dust all on it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't picked up this Bible all darn year. But guess what? I'm going through something. Guess what I'm going to do? Well, when you when a Christian walk up to that Bible, what they going to do? Y'all know what they darn do. They just randomly pick a darn page. They go like this. You know what I'm saying? And put their finger down, and whatever it says, that's what God speak to them. And you know they, you know they be cheating. They be like, it, it's something in the large, something like that. Oh no, that's done away with. Let me keep going. You know what I'm saying? Then you get something in Isaiah. I'm like, Ooh, no, that, that ain't talking to me. That ain't talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, then they go all the way down. You know what I'm saying? Get something in Ephesians or something. Ah, there we go. You know what I'm saying? Ah, this, this is. See, that Lord, I knew the Lord spoke to me. And they get telling them lies in church. You know what? I just opened the Bible and it just landed on the feet. Stop that line. You turned that thing five times before you got to darn Ephesians. You know what I'm saying? It landed on Isaiah telling you he was a sinner. You know what I'm saying? You didn't want to hear that though. Right? That's what they do. Go ahead and give me a Christian. You know what I'm saying? A little random Christian. You can turn to Ephesians if you feel like it. I'll show you what these Christians do. That's good. Whatever right there. What is that? Uh, He's still in Matthew. Oh, yeah, no, I mean Ephesians. Okay. And, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Uh huh. So this is what the Christians do. They stop. You gotta be renewed. You know what our problem is? It ain't enough of us to renew. We still thinking the same way that we used to think when we was in high school. Everybody get, oh, I know somebody thinking in high school right now. The high school thinking right now. The whole church is looking at. But now, now it's relating to what? It's not relating to book when we think about high school. Right? It ain't nothing in the book say stop thinking like you was in high school. So it's not relating to the book. It's relating to us. Because guess what? Last night, I just made a Facebook post. I just made a Facebook post talking about y'all need to grow up. So now when I'm looking at it, now God talking. I'm a prophet of God when I said that. I didn't know. You know what? I don't. You know what, Pastor? You're going to talk to the pastor after church. Pastor, I'm going to tell you the truth. Your sermon that you preached today. I had just made a Facebook post about it. Only thing similar about the sermon is that he said, y'all need to grow up. And pastor said, we got to renew our minds, stop thinking like high school. Right? We connect that and be like, that must have been God that, you know what I'm saying, made me post that. Right? And we get attracted to it for nothing. What did we learn out of, okay, we got it. Need to grow up, stop thinking like a kid. Right? What did we learn from the book today? I preach a whole sermon on renewing my mind, but what did I learn from the book? You can't do it. You can't do it. Right? But now if you take this same thing, and then you turn to, let's see, Jeremiah chapter 31. You ain't gonna turn grab it. It's Jeremiah chapter 31. We're gonna come back to Matthew. It's Jeremiah chapter 31. And what I want, verse 31? 31, 31. This is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Watch what the book say. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel 
with the house of Jacob. Mm -hmm. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts mm -hmm. and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Mm -hmm. and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord. Mm -hmm. For they shall all know me mm -hmm. from the least to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Mm -hmm. Thus says the Lord, which gives sun for light by day in the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night which divides the sea with the waves that are aboard. The Lord of hosts is his name. Mm -hmm. If those ordinances depart from before me, says the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus says the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all they have done, says the Lord. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that the city shall be built unto the Lord from the tower of Hananiel unto the gate of the corner. Whole, the whole city going to be built again. Right? That's the renewing of the mind. You looking at renewing mind, I just got to start thinking different. That's what people will tell you. I mean, you just can't keep, you keep, you know, that's the, you know, everybody, that, it's the definition of insanity. You know what I'm saying? You keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. You can't be expecting a different result. That's the definition of it. Hopefully, ain't nobody talking about no darn insanity. All y'all darn insane. Y'all be doing different stuff all the time. It's still darn crazy. What's wrong with y'all? Right? All y'all darn insane. He's not talking about the definition of insanity. The man is talking about, I told you something new is coming. And you still thinking about old stuff. I'm not talking about you thinking like old high school. I'm talking about you have, yeah, you have to re renew your mind in a way where your hope is towards my covenant. We can't just keep looking at the book and relating this stuff to our lives. Our lives is a darn mess. We got to relate it to what's in the book. The book got to relate to the book. Everything in this book is about who? That's the man. If that thing don't tie into that, what are we talking about? We ain't talking about nothing. This is Matthew, back, uh, back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 13. We is at verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. He said it was given unto the disciples to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And we now know why he said that. He said that because we heard that all the way back in Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8 told us, bind it amongst the disciples. Seal it amongst the disciples. Right? Bind up the testimony and seal it amongst the disciples. Right? Now we know. Okay, that's why he said, oh, they got to get it in parables. Oh, the way you got to get it, you can get it explained. Let's see, keep going. For whosoever has to him shall be given. Uh huh. And he shall have more abundance. Uh huh. But whosoever has not from him shall be taken away, even that he has. Uh huh. Therefore speak out of them in parables, because they seen, see not. Okay, hold on. The reason I speak unto them in parables is because they see, but guess what they don't see? They don't see. They, they hear? Hearing, they hear not. So they hear what I'm talking about, but guess what? They don't hear. I'm speaking on, I'm purposely speaking to them in parables so that they can think they have something. But at the same time, your butt ain't got nothing. You can think you hear something, but guess what? You ain't heard nothing. Neither do they understand. But I thought I understood. But guess what? You don't understand nothing. Y'all have to understand, this is God. Right? This is God. This is not... This, we're, this is not a game. This is not some. This is not this fairy tale that these people make up. This is God. God is the one that put it out there, make it look all pretty, make it look like it's going, and your butt ain't going nowhere. You just sitting there. All for what reason? Let's see. Let's jump on down. Let's jump on down. This is verse 51. Watch what he said. Y'all sure said unto them, have, have ye understood all these things? And mm -hmm. he said unto him, Yes, Lord. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which brings forth out of his treasure things new and old. He said, He's like a householder who brings things out of his treasure new and old. New 
and old. <laughs> right? That's Yahushua telling you that, right? All right, now let's go by, back to Isaiah chapter 28. Let's see if we can make this make sense. It's Isaiah chapter 28. Give me verse uh, 11, what we want. Isaiah chapter 28, maybe verse 11. 10. 10. This is Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. What did the book say? He said, new and old, right? All right. For precept must be upon precept. precept he said, you got to have precept. a commandment on top of a commandment. Commandment on top of a commandment. Line upon line, line upon line. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. New and old. All that you got to put it together. And guess what? Go ahead. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. I'm purposely speaking to the people in a way that they will not understand. So when a man is telling you, when I, I, I uh, uh, seeing, they see not, and hearing, they hear not, Neither do they what? Understand. He says, for with stammering lips. What's a stammer? Stutter. Stutter. I'm sitting here. Right? In a what? In another what? In another tongue. So in another language, and with a speech impediment, I'm speaking to this people. Right? Because I don't want them to understand. I'm purposely putting it in a way that you won't understand. How is a baby going to learn this? That's the question he started off with. Who gonna learn it? The kids? Don't you wean from the milk? Don't you know precept gotta be put on on precept? Take skill to do this. Boy, what's wrong with you? Right. Line the turn, line. What do you mean by the wake up and just start doing this in your sleep? Right. You gotta take a little bit here and then a little bit there. Right? For with stammering lips and another tongue, I speak to this people. Fool me. Well, go ahead. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Uh-huh. And what? The refreshing. But what happened? Yet they would not hear. And for the ones that would not hear, what happened? Come to me, all you burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But they would not hear. Uh-huh. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept. Since they didn't hear, guess how the word of the Lord came to them? Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. It came like a puzzle. They couldn't understand it. It was purposely given to them in a way because they wouldn't hear it. Because it was it was given to them like a parable. Hearing they hear not. Seeing they see not. And neither did they understand. Because of that, it was precept upon precept. They didn't have nobody to put it together for them. Line upon line, they had nobody to put it together for them. Here, there, there a little, there a little. Old and new. They had nobody to put it together for them. Then guess what? Keep going. That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Whole thing is a setup. I'm putting it out there. I'm telling you, kids ain't about to learn this. A baby not about to learn this, right? I'm gonna put it out there for you. Oh, you didn't hear me. Okay, so if you didn't hear me, now it's about to be a puzzle to you. Then when it's a puzzle, I'm making it a puzzle so that you can't put it together. And when you can't put it together, you're gonna be broken and snared and taken. You're gonna be fall backwards and be broken and snared and taken. Right? That's the trap. That's the snare. A snare is a trap. Right? I'm setting it up. Most of I got is setting it up to put it in a position where if you don't pay attention to what he's saying, if you're not patient about what he's saying, if you're not focused, if you don't give yourself time to learn and understand and grow in what he's saying, and you just try to jump out there and, oh, no, I already know it. Oh, okay. I got something for you. And that's what these people do. They have these traditions passed down and they just know. You ever heard of in my, in my church, they used to say, you ever just know that you know that you know that you know that you know. Talking about faith, you know what I'm saying? You just know that you 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 say it. You just darn know, don't you? Ain't got no evidence. Can't support it. Can't line the book up. But you, but your butt just darn know based off of darn nothing. You know what that is? I wouldn't hear. I wouldn't hear. All right? Whole book trying to tell you something. This is uh, Romans chapter 10. One day we're going to have to get back to, you know what I'm saying? We have to get, get back to Daniel. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we've, been reading, we've been reading about Daniel. I don't know, I don't know what happened. We even got back to Daniel. We got to get back to Daniel. We got to do a little talking tonight, though. Daniel. I mean, uh, David, my bad. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We got, we got to get back to David. David. You know what I'm talking about? We got to do a little talking tonight, though. What did I say? Romans 10? Yeah. It's Romans chapter 10. Give me verse 1. Where's Tony at? What? Where's Tony at? <laughs> yeah, buddy, you know what I'm saying? That's a book, that Romans. That ain't hilarious. 
In Romans chapter 10, let me see what verse 1 talking about. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for Israel is that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. For what? But not according to knowledge. Uh-oh. He said it's not according to knowledge. These people got a zeal for God? That's what zeal means. I mean, you're on fire. You ever heard a Christian say, I'm on fire for God? You don't think these people got a real zeal for God? They do. They got a real zeal. Some of us had a real darn zeal for God. Right? It's just a real zeal. That thing legitimate. But guess what? It's not according to what? Knowledge. That's a problem. It's a problem if we just running out there and we got all this energy, but we're directed in the wrong direction. Right? That's a problem. The book trying to tell you, that's good. That's part of it. Gotta have the knowledge too. He said they truly got a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. What does the book say? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You don't think this is talking about the Christians? Right? If the book tried to tell you, you have to obey, right? You have to do, you know what I'm saying? If, if, if the book clearly tells you in, in Hebrews chapter 5, that Yahushua is the author and the finisher of, of uh, salvation for all who what? Obey him. For anybody who obeys him, he is the author. He writes your name in the book of life. Right? If that was the book say, and then you tell, you tell somebody at your church, it don't matter what you do. God loves you. He can't love you more or less no matter what you do. You can't earn his love. You can't earn righteousness. It's not by works. All these different things. They get throwing all that stuff, throwing it at you. Okay. Guess what that is? A direct contradiction with the word say. So if I'm telling myself I'm saved no matter what I do, book saying you saved if you obey, then I've established what? Your own righteousness. My own righteousness was just established. So read that again. Watch this. But they being ignorant, ignorant of God's righteousness. You say it. They ignorant. <laughs> They all ignorant, they, you know what I'm saying, his righteousness, keep going. In going about to establish their own righteousness, uh -huh. have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Mm. For the Messiah. Christians don't think that's talking about them. I'll tell you why. In this context, who Paul was talking about, Paul was talking about people who keep the law, right? We had our people, our people, we was raised on the law. Right? That's all we had. We don't think you give up the law. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? You can't come along and take that from us. That's our culture. That's all. That's what we are is the law. So then when you get to going out to these Gentiles, you know what I'm saying? Imagine like this community is all Hebrews. This is the only place for, for hundreds of years. This is the only place our law was taught. Right? Right here. If anybody kept our law, you had to move into this community. Now, if you go out on the strip, these people, wow, they do whatever they want to do. But once you come in here, you keep the law. But it was only in here. You know what I'm saying? Now imagine then somebody coming along talking about he's the man, he's the one all the prophecies been talking about and then he take his butt on the strip. Right? And when he on the strip a whole bunch of people run up to him like, yeah man I want, I've been wanting to learn about what y'all do over there in that community. And he said, you know what? You can learn it too. You know what I'm saying? He said, don't worry about all the stuff that they do in the community. Just worry about these things that I tell you and you'll be just as good as the ones that's in the community. Right? We would be looking like, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? We don't eat pork. We never ate pork in this community. And you're trying to tell them that they just as good as us that in this community. But the rules of this community, you can't eat pork. But they out there eating pork. That didn't make sense to us. That was a real struggle for us. Right? So what we said is, you know what? Forget what you talking about, man. Because we don't believe what you're talking about when you're telling all these wild folks. That they can eat whatever they want and they can still do what we do. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, no. Forget what you're talking about. We know that we righteous. At that very moment, they said, well, I'm establishing my righteousness over. So that's what our people did. We said, man, we from Israel. We keep the law. These other people can't be accepted like us. So now we don't want to go off and do what you're talking about. We're establishing our own righteousness. Right? In their mind, they're saying we just keeping the law. It's innocent to them. In their minds, like, man, we're doing the same thing we always done, and it really did come from God. Same thing with the Christians. Christians looking at, they, they really are looking at the New Testament. And the, the New Testament really does say, not by works. Like, it really says those words, not by works. So when they looking at it, they like, 
I don't have, like, it doesn't matter what I do. It's not about what I do. It's not about what I do. You know what I'm saying? For them, in their mind, it's not, it's not for lack of zeal. They have the zeal. They really are on fire for God. They just don't have the information. They're ignorant of the knowledge. Nobody's taught them the truth. Nobody broke them down and corrected them. Right? So they are establishing, even though it's the opposite, right? The other group saying, no, we got to keep all the laws. That's how they establish their own righteousness. Now it's the total opposite. See how the devil run a, 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 a number on us? You know what I'm See how the devil run a number on us? Now it's the total opposite. Now you don't keep any of the law and you establishing your own righteousness. Right? The most high God is going to make you a fool on either end. You got to come up the middle. You got to come up the door. You can't take the left road or the right road. You got to come down that straight narrow path. That's the only way to do it. The man did, didn't the man tell you? He said, if you come up through the if you come up through the darn window, what are you? A thief and a robber. What I'm gonna sit here and do? I got them. I'm knocking on the dark door. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, all right, man. You know what I'm saying? It was tough getting here, but uh, you know what I'm saying? You might open it up for a brother. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way to go. What I'm gonna climb through the window for? The man told you I'm gonna be a thief. I mean, you just gonna want to be a thief. He already laid it out for you. But you gotta know that. If you don't know that, what you gonna do? You can't do nothing if you don't know it. And that's, that's, what, that's what we have to do. We have to make sure we put ourselves in a position and say, okay, I can learn. I can learn something. Right? I can learn something. I haven't set it up. You know what I'm saying? I haven't set it up for myself to be like, all right, I'm not going to hear. Because after that point, then the whole word going word to be to you as a puzzle. And you're going to think you're getting something. The man going to talk to you, you be like, oh, yeah, I see that. You ain't see nothing. You go, like, oh, man, I heard that. You ain't heard nothing. Neither do you understand. All right, let's see. Uh, keep going. For the Messiah is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Uh huh. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law, that mm -hmm. the man which does these things shall live by them. Okay. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. Say wow. not in your heart who shall ascend to heaven, that is to bring the Messiah down from above. But who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring the Messiah again from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart, that is... The word of faith which we preach. Mm -hmm. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Yahushua and shall believe in your heart, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Mm -hmm. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. He For said, The same Lord is rich. Unto all that call upon him. Right? Watch this. Keep going. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right? How then shall they call on him and whom so they watch shall this. believe? Watch this. Whoever calls on him is going to be saved. That's really written right there. So a Christian could easily take that. A Christian could easily take that and they could say, you know what? There it is. That's how I know. Right? That's how I know. Oh, mwah. That daddy boy, huh? How you do that? Mm -hmm. You got to relax, okay? You all right? You okay? You all right, man. Everybody bust a little lip. Mama boy. That ain't good there, son. But uh, you could take that by itself and you can say, look, if you call on the Lord, you save. Right? But you take that. This, this is by itself, right? You take that and guess what you develop from that? Let's, change, let's think about a Christian practice that goes on all the time. You call on the name of the Lord. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What's been developed from that? Huh? All righteousness? The own righteousness. Definitely your own. You're establishing your own righteousness. But but what 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 let what teaching or what practice what tradition do you think comes out of that? If you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. Jesus, help me, please. What about what about when they tell you to come to the front of the church and they say, "Repeat after me." <laughs> because in Nehemiah, all you got to do is say it. Just repeat after me. Just close close your eyes, brother. Repeat after me. All right. It's the Lord's prayer. You can send it, Lord. Here it is. You know what I'm saying? It's the sinner's prayer. God, forgive me for everything that I've done. 
do in the future. Everything that I'm going to do. <laughs> Everything I'll think about doing right now. Here. Just forgive me of all of it, Lord. And guess what? I'm saved now. Because I called on his name. It's just words, right? All you have to, that's all you got to do, call on his name. Right? Back it up. Watch. We mix some more shit. Back it up. Go back to a couple verses. What verse are we on? Uh, 16? 13. 13? Go back to about verse uh, 10. For what the hard man believes unto righteousness. Go back to 9. But if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord, y'all Go back to 8. But what says it? The uh -huh. word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Okay, now watch this. That if you shall confess with your mouth. If you Lord confess Yahushua, with your mouth. The Lord Yahushua. And then what? And shall believe in your heart that God. And then shall believe in your heart. Two things. Confess with your mouth the Lord Yahushua. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's another place. We ain't got to grab it. There's another place. They say. Why do you say unto me, Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? So he said, if you confess with your mouth, right, the Lord, Yahushua. Notice that he didn't just say confess with your mouth, your Yahushua. That wouldn't be a confession. It's not a confession. You can't just confess a name. You know, uh, yeah, I confess, Philip. A confession, you got to be giving something up. You got to admit something. Now, if I throw something on it, if I confess Philip is the master, that's different. Right? That's a confession. I'm like, okay, I acknowledge. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to admit it before, but you know what I'm saying? I confess the Lord, Yahushua. That's the master, Yahushua. Right? So you have to confess he's the master. Then the man come back in another place, precept upon prior, line upon line, right? If you take that by itself, you can get something out of it. But if you put it together with what he said before, he said, why do you say, Lord, Lord, but do not what I say? So I got that. We got the requirement for that first part. That means you got to call him Lord. To call him Lord, you got to do what? Got to obey. All right. Got that. Boom. So you confess with your mouth, but you got to do what he said if you're going to confess. What's the next piece? And shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Mm, we, ain't got, we ain't got to get it. But it's a place somewhere in the gospel that says something about the treasures of the heart. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I said it backwards. From the mouth comes the treasures of the heart. Right? Whether evil or good. Right? It's something to say that, ain't it? So then, I can't help it. Grab uh, Mark chapter 7. We don't come back and read. We don't come back and get this. Because, I mean, if you don't know how to put it together, guess what? This all makes sense. It sounds like just say out loud that Jesus is Lord. And you get it. Right? Hmm. What do you think came from that? Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. What do you think came from that? What, what tradition do you think came from that one? What tradition do we see? All the time. What the Christian be doing? What about the bumper sticker? Or the t-shirts? You ain't never seen a t-shirt? Jesus is Lord? Mm -hmm. The bumper sticker, Jesus is Lord? Yeah, I mean, you do that. Where do you think that came from? Because it say, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Yahushua the Messiah. Right? You put that, you're like, you know what? I'm going to put it on the bumper stick. And they think they're helping people because you know what? People are going to look at it. And you know it's always going to be something. You know how you see, yeah, it's some license plates like that. You know how you see a license plate and you always trying to, what that license plate say? G, G, Jesus is, look, Jesus is Lord is what it say. They think they just saved that person. Look, he just said it. He confessed it with his mouth. He don't even realize he saved it. Because that's how they look at it. So they're going to put the bumper sticker, the t-shirt, because maybe somebody would just say it out loud. And at that point, guess what they did? They confessed with their mouth. In their mind. Right? In their mind, that's what they did. The next part of it is from the heart. Right? You got to do it from the heart. So then we look at it and be like, well, I really, really mean it. That means it's from the heart. No, 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 no. It's Matthew chapter uh, 7, verse 20. Mark. I mean, Mark. Sorry about that. It's Mark chapter 7, verse 20. We can get Matthew too, though. But yeah, let's go to Mark. Chapter uh, chapter seven verse twenty. Oh, you can get coming up. 
No <laughs> Definitely is. <laughs> and he said, that which comes out of the man, that defiles the man. He said, that which comes out of the man, that's what defiles the man. Watch this. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So this all comes from the heart. Right? From within, from the heart of the man comes what? Evil thoughts. These are the evil thoughts that come from the heart. Let's hear about it. Adulteries. Uh-huh. Fornication. Uh-huh. Murders. Uh-huh. Thefts. Uh-huh. Covetousness. Uh-huh. Wickedness. Uh-huh. Deceit. Uh-huh. Mischievousness. Uh-huh. An evil lie. Uh-huh. Blasphemy. Uh-huh. Pride. Uh-huh. Foolishness. Uh-huh. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Mm. These are the things that defile you. And guess where they come from? The heart. Now let's go back to Romans. It's Romans chapter 10. Where is that? Verse uh, 9? Verse 10? Nine. It's Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Watch this. Let's see if this makes a little bit more sense now. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Yahushua. Now you already know you can't call him Lord unless you do what he say now. He said, well, what's the point of calling me Lord? You don't do what I say. So you got to confess with your mouth the Lord Yahushua. Got to do what you say. Gotta, that means you got to do what he say. And... And shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. And believe from where? Your heart. So then you got to believe from the heart he raised from the dead. But guess what defiles your heart? All those things we just talked about. So if you sin, that's defiling your heart. How are you going to believe from the heart that's defiled? Can't do it. So at the end of the day, got to obey. Guess what? If you're not putting line on top of line, how are you going to figure that out? I mean, you just take that by itself. That thing just sounds like, just say it out loud and really, really mean it, and you'll be all right. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. These people make a fool out of us. <laughs> but with the heart, the man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Uh-huh. For the scripture says, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. He said there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. That's a fact. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you call on his name, you shall be saved. Now it makes sense. He trying to tell you, everybody who do what I just told you, you shall be saved. But you know it's a Christian somewhere. He knew it too. He knew it was a Christian somewhere that was going to be like, mm, all I got to do is call on him. So watch the series of questions that he asked next. Bro, uh, who... How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How do you call on somebody? And you didn't even believe a man. Right? But then the Christian is going to be like, no, I believe. Then watch this. And how shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? Hold on. How are you going to believe if you haven't heard? But guess what the Christian is going to say? No, I heard. Watch this. And how shall they hear without a preacher? But you ain't even got a darn preacher. And guess what the Christian is going to say? No, I do got a preacher. <laughs> Right? But watch this. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Ooh, how do you know your preacher is a sent preacher? So he lines it up. He's letting you know, oh, no, no, no. You can believe, but you believe in something, but you didn't hear the right thing. Okay, now you can believe and you can hear, but you're hearing something, but you didn't hear it from a preacher. Okay, okay. You can believe, you can hear, and you hear it from a preacher, but your preacher wasn't sent from God. So that means it's multiple places where this thing can break down. And you can think you got it all the way up to the top until you find out your preacher wasn't really sent from God. Because guess what? Your preacher's not putting line upon line. Your preacher's not darn putting precept upon precept. Your preacher don't understand. Your preacher is handing down tradition. Right? He just going based off of what we heard prior. What we've been taught. What we just thought it was. He didn't open up the book and try to figure it out. Right? Let's see. Let's keep going. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them. Who that, what? How, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Okay. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. They have not all done what? Obeyed the gospel. <laughs> I don't care how you look at it in this book. It's going to line you up. It's going to straighten you up. All it takes is somebody to put it together. It's a puzzle. I get it. It's difficult. It's difficult. Guess what we can't do, though? Well, no, man. I'm trying to tell you the Bible. The Bible is about Messianic Jews. 
You know what I'm saying? What it's trying to tell you is that, you know what I'm saying, like your lineage go through your mama. <laughs> I'm not about to sit here and entertain this stuff. You can't prove it in the book at all. Right. Show me one lineage that went through the mom. Everything say in his son, in his son, in his son, in his son, in his father, father of, this guy, father of. Okay. Guess what they're going to try to tell us? That's sexist. That's why I can't believe the Bible, because the Bible, you know what I'm saying, the Bible just don't respect women. Cut that stuff out. Yeah, so it just doesn't make sense that when someone gets married, they always take the man's last name. And when the children are born, they take the man's last name. That's it. I mean, that's our tradition. It ain't got nothing to do with the Bible, technically. You know what I'm saying? But that that's where that tradition comes from. Right? The tradition comes from the, the reason why I take on the, the man's name. Because we knew... That in our culture, what we would do is we would say, you know what? My name is Philip. I'm the son of Hosea. So he'd say, Philip, son of Hosea. Right? And then when I have a son, he would say, my name is Zahar, son of Philip, who's the son of Hosea. So eventually, everything tied back to who? Hosea. So then, and when you look at it. even say Zahar, son of Hosea. Huh? Yeah, it might even skip, right? Because Hosea is the one that you tie back to. So eventually, guess what became our last name? Hosea. Right? That's why you even look at, look at, look at, uh, in the book, you see Simon, who, who was Peter. Simon, bar what? Jonah. Because guess who his father was? Jonah. Simon bar Jonah. Son of Jonah is what it is. Right? So you look at these things and that's how the book is laid out. The traditions that we live on, a lot of the traditions that we live on are based off of the book. But it all ties back to the Father. Got to. If it don't, how are we going to get there? How are we going to tie back to the Most High God? Right. Oh, you know how? Because these people believe God is a woman. It makes sense for them. That ain't make sense for them. But they be looking like, well, see, God is a feminine being. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, a woman wasn't made until he took him out of Adam. You know okay, y'all go. You know what I'm saying? Y'all go whatever y'all feel like going with. Let me tell you what me and my family going to go with. The book. That thing don't make no darn sense the way these people be thinking. Right? They run out of darn running their darn mouth. These crazy darn people. Y'all hear about the man who just shot up, you know what I'm saying? Just shot up yeah, some stuff yeah, in New yeah. Zealand. Mm -hmm. I that. It was like a mosque. I guess he put it, I'm saying, I don't really know. I guess it's a mosque. I ain't seen all the stuff yet. I just heard about it a little bit. I guess he put a camera on and just start shooting folk. That's crazy. Lie. You know what I'm saying? They wrote up a, uh, wrote up a, uh, what they call it? What do they call that thing? Manifesto? You know what I'm saying? It's like when you write write out to like your last words and all that. Mm -hmm. Wrote out the words. And guess, I mean, I don't know. I guess what he was talking about. What? Trump was like his idol. Wow. Okay, and out of all, this is a man, this is an Australian man who traveled to New Zealand. Right? He's from Australia, supposedly, and went to New Zealand. Trump is his idol. And guess who else he talked about? Candace Darn Owens. So Candace Owens is the black girl, right? That that is a Republican that everybody was mad at because she is like, you know what I'm saying, black people need to be Republicans. That's the one that Kanye West started, you know what I'm saying? That's how Kanye West got into all this MAGA hat stuff because he was going and he was kind of helping her out. You know what I'm saying? So she's like the black girl that everybody, all the Democrats hate because she like trying to make all the, the, the people Republicans. You know what I'm saying? And she crazy too. But it just so happened this. Australian white man from New Zealand, I mean, I'm saying from, from, from Australia, went to New Zealand, Zealand, shot himself up, and his idol is Trump, and he talking about Candace Owens inside his, his letter, commending her. I don't know now. Me, personally, that just seemed a little too convenient for me. <laughs> hey, you know bro, what I'm saying? Sometimes these people are like... You know what I'm saying? It don't even feel creative enough. Yeah, they don't even try. It feel like that thing just a little bit too convenient. That's crazy. Now, I don't know the story. I'm not going to sit here and try to act like, it's I, like it's I figured like it out. It's like this has been happening since he became president. So, like, how is this not... You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, racism? Guess where it didn't start? Didn't start with Trump. So did. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know why everybody started acting racist now. Because it definitely didn't start with Trump. Let me see. Where did it start? It probably started under, I don't know, maybe George Washington? Oh, oh before that. 
right? Before that, because I remember it was a guy named uh, Crispus Atticus, or Atticus, Atticus, right? Isn't it Crispus Atticus, right? He's a black man, and he fought, he, he pretty much started the Revolutionary War. He took the first bullet, right? And you know what? He was a darn slave, or at least oppressed, right? So it started before the Revolutionary War, which means it started before the first president, right? So that means it didn't go all the way back before the flags. We just, we just had we just had colonies. Then the flags went up, and guess what kept strong? Because I mean, you had the American flag and the Confederate flag, and under both of them, guess what was happening? Slavery. Under both of them. Why are they trying to get us to get rid of the, the, the Confederate flag then? Get rid of all of them. We're going to get rid of Let these people fly their Confederate flag. Don't we try to treat that thing no different? <laughs> then how I feel about it. If you going to let them keep the American flag up, then just go ahead and let the other folk keep the Confederate flag. No, that don't make no sense to be treating them unfair. Now. It, wasn't like, it wasn't like the Northern Jews was fighting for it because they cared about our freedom. Oh, right? no, no, they wouldn't care. But they had slaves while they were doing it. That don't make no sense. Yeah. They had slaves. How you going to have slaves and at the same time be fighting for something, fighting to end slavery? And then no, no, no. You not, fighting to balance the economy. It's what you're trying to do. And not give them what you promised them. Like, oh, yeah. No, you're not going to. No, that's crazy. Yeah, you signed up for the war. 40 acres and a mule. Right. Ain't getting none of that. Let me tell you something. 40 acres, that's a lot of darn land. Now, I don't blame them. Now, I don't, I don't blame them now. Now, if this was my darn country, and I brought your little black butt in as a slave, <laughs> I ain't about to give you a bunch of free, a free 40 acres and a mule. You might get the mule. I'm going to give you a whole work for you. There's a lot of darn land. There ain't a little bit of land. That's a lot of darn land. And I'm just giving it away to every black man? No, we got to end that. Somebody, you know somebody, you know somebody, you know how people just be running their mouth be like, look, man, I can get this done for you. You know what I'm saying? I'll 40 acres of mule. Just overpromise some stuff. That thing got back to, I like to think it was Abraham Lincoln. That thing got back. I already emancipated the Negroes. What am I supposed to do? I ain't giving no darn 40, no darn acres. You know what I'm Give them a couple dollars. You are right? And then we move on. We move on. We wait. The way the type of people we are, we adapt, though. You know what I'm saying? We adapt. We figure it out. We start We start trying to make it work. And what they do every time we try to make something work, they put another roadblock in front of them. Right? Put another roadblock in front of them. Another roadblock in front of them. Every time we feel like we're getting closer and closer. Like we escaped slavery. Okay, cool. Now we moving and shaking. Everything good. Let's go ahead and bomb them. All right, let's fly, let's fly a plane. The first terrorist attack in the, with a plane, that was on us, right? Let's go ahead and fly a plane into their into they little, you know what I'm saying, they little marketplace, you know what I'm saying? We're going to mess up all this stuff, shoot a bunch of folks, right? Oh, y'all starting to, oh, y'all starting to get some, y'all starting to get money to get houses? Oh, no, they can't buy houses over here. No, you can get a house. You got to buy it over there, though. And you can't get a loan to do it. Right? You got to get it over there. They gave them loans. Just not loans over here. You know what I'm saying? When you get your loan, you got to do it over there. With a ridiculous interest rate. With a ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to be able to afford it. Then guess what's going to happen? Then you're going to lose your house. And I'm on it. So I'll put you. This, this is how it works. I, only, I already put you in the neighborhood I want you to put to stay in. Right? Then on top of that, I say, you know what? You get this high interest rate, you're going to lose that loan. When you lose that loan, that brings down the property value of that neighborhood that already has low property value. So now you're stuck. You know what I'm saying? Now you're stuck. Then, you know what I'm saying, in Section 8, I don't know how, but somehow, Section 8 is always on a particular side of town. Affordable housing is always on a particular side of town. I don't know how that worked out. Right? Then they build, you know what? We have to do something for these people. We're gonna call it a project. So they build, they build like a whole apartment, you know what I'm saying? Specifically to help people who are impoverished and in need. And give no attention to them. Let them boys just run around killing themselves up in there. Right? Not to mention, I mean, we gonna clean up the lead everywhere. But guess what we not gonna do in that neighborhood? We ain't clean up nothing. So now you look back and you're like, why are the lead level so high in the same places where the crime is so high? I wonder if there's a correlation. Because I don't know why they start making unleaded gasoline. Like, I don't know what led to that decision. I don't know what studies happened where the white folks are like, mm, 
maybe this leg can make people crazy when we spilling the gas on the ground. Like maybe that thing is making people nuts. All right, maybe it's affecting how they think. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's making people be a little more brash than normal. It may not be safe. Let's take the lead out of the gasoline. I don't know how they came to that decision. Right? But all of a sudden, I still got lead in the pipes in the black people neighborhood. Like wherever the wherever the black people are, for some reason there wasn't enough funding to change all the pipes and change the lead and do all that. I don't know why we couldn't come up with enough money for the black people. And still to this day. My man Trump now, man. That's my man now. You know what I'm saying? I like him. I like him a little bit now. He sure is talking a lot of billions for this wall. I can't remember the last time somebody shut down the government to fix a pipe. I can't remember the last time somebody shut down the government. I mean, let's think about it. Trump for his wall, for the wall he wanna do, that man shut down the government for two months. That's a bad man there. We had a president though, didn't we? Obama? Didn't the, the crisis in Michigan and everything, didn't that happen under him? He's in office, right? So he was, he's in office. When did he, when did he say, you know what, I'm not signing this budget? I'm not signing this budget until y'all put something in there for Flint. Can y'all imagine that? Can y'all imagine if we had somebody that, like, we'd just be like, nah, nah, we not. Let me tell you something. Congressman, y'all can lock in, y'all can do whatever y'all want. Whole government shut down until we do something for my people. Whole thing shut down until we do something for my people. But guess what? He can't do that. You know why? Because he's not just the president of black people. He's the president of all people. I wish we had a black Trump. You know what I'm talking about? Trump make it move his people. He's in there little, little, little. I don't care what y'all talking about. This whole thing be shut down. Ain't nobody eating. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? This thing. Whole thing gonna be shut down two months. Give me my darn wall. Then he played him. They gave, you know what I'm saying? They didn't give him what he wanted. He got it anyway. Not national emergency. You don't think Obama could have did the same thing? Shut down the government. Nobody left. Are oh, you still not going to fix Flint? That's all right. There's a whole lot of lead going on in the country. You know what? National emergency. I'll make the military pay for it. All right? It's only because we don't put pressure. We got to be able to put pressure. Telling people, man, we're not stupid, man. I'm saying? We ain't been, we've been doing this thing for too long. We're not stupid. It's about time to get up out of here. That's why these people talking like they talking. It's about time to get up out of here now. Right? That's why you hear all these people talking about the, you know what I'm saying, the, the ADOS. You know what I'm saying? American descendant of slaves. When have you ever heard, when have you ever heard a whole country, a politician having to answer to that language? Descendant of slaves. That's what we talk about. The video, the video that I made, you know what I'm saying? You just posted the other day when I'm talking about our history. What is it, what is it called? Uh, identifying the roots. Yeah, the roots. Descending to slaves. That's language that we use. We talk about being descendants of slaves. It's crazy how now the main topic, everybody want to separate themselves. Now it's like, no, 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 it's different. It just, look, Kamala Harris, she running for president. It's different. Like you black, your skin is dark, but your daddy Jamaican, right? Like Idris Elba, like it was great. Yeah, we got black people in movies. But you from over there, you not American descendants. It's something now. It's something special to that. Don't get me wrong. Jamaicans are people too. A lot of people in Europe is our people too, right? But people are now trying to be specific to lineage. That's important. This stuff ain't happening on the accident. These people know what's going on. We gonna end off. Look at this. Uh, this is uh, this is Ezekiel chapter 30, 20. This is Ezekiel chapter twenty. Give me verse what? Twenty. Go downstairs. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 20. I don't even think that's really what I want. That ain't what I want. Give me a... What is it that I want? Micah? Ezekiel 20 is saying uh, the whole world don't know. What's my, What's Not Micah. What's the other one? Not Micah. Malachi. Malachi. Give me Malachi chapter what? Six? What's the last verse in Malachi? La last chapter in Malachi. Talks about the day of the Lord. I think it's six. That's what you're looking for. I think so. Malachi. Oh, oh, remember Moses. That's what you're looking for. Yes, I think so. Yes. That's not exactly what I'm looking for, but I think it's right by it. Four. Yeah. It's four. Yeah. All right. 
Go ahead and read it from the top. Watch it. Oh, the day comes that shall burn as an oven. Uh huh. And all the proud, yes, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Mm -hmm. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, mm -hmm. with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He said, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And look at what Elijah is going to do. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. Thus I come and smite the earth with a curse. So now we walking around here, we just talked about our lineage connects how? Through the fathers, right? Mm -hmm. So we connect through the fathers. At this point, yeah. we don't know what tribe we're from. I couldn't tell you if I'm from Issachar or Judah or Zebulun. Like I couldn't tell you what tribe I'm from, right? And I would have to be connected to who in order to do that? I would have to go back. I would say, my name is Philip, son of Zebulun. Right? Philip, son of Issachar. Right? But I can't do that right now because I don't know my daddy. I mean, I know my daddy. But you know what I'm saying? But I don't, you know what I mean? You go all the way back. I can't go all the way back like that. So then Elijah comes and he going to turn what? The heart of the children back to their fathers. He going to turn the heart of the children back to the fathers. And the fathers back to the children. So he going to make that connection. Elijah going to come and be letting you know. Just like Yahushua, you remember Yahushua, everything we see in the book, it just, it just trying to give you a precursor. You remember when Yahushua spoke to Peter, we just talked about it. He said, who, who, who do men say I am? Peter answered, he was like, oh, you the Christ, son of the living God. He told Peter, he was like, look, flesh and blood didn't get that to you. Flesh and blood didn't get that to you. Right? Then he came back to him and told you, you're, you're Simon. Son of Jonah. Right? You're Simon, son of Jonah. He told him who his daddy was. Right? That's the same way that the man going to come back and tell us. Elijah going to be out here passing them things out. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's technology. You, see, you never know. You know what I'm saying? I like to imagine that, you know what I'm saying? He used the letters. You know what I'm saying? He going to come out with the S10. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. Let me text you. I'm going to text you your daddy right now. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? You Zebedee. You know what I'm saying? All right, now you, you turn around, boy. Nah, you ain't even from the nation. You know what I'm saying? You stand over there, we'll get to you. You, all right, yeah, okay, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You Issachar. You know what I'm saying? You Benjamin. You know what I'm saying? Just shooting it to him on the tail. Everybody just picking that thing up. You know what I'm saying? That's how that thing go. Right? We look at it, and the man that's going to connect us to our fathers. We are being prepared for that mindset now. I mean, we already know, but the masses don't. They haven't thought about things in lineage. They just kind of look at it like, all black people are the same. That thing's so annoying, bro. That's how they looked at it, right? We have to be conditioned and be like, no, nah, that's not the case. Not all black people are the same. That's what's happening right now. Like, no German person is going to say all white people are the same. They're not going to do it. No, no, no. We've been forced, because of oppression, we've been forced to be like, okay, we got to increase our numbers at whatever cost. So that's why we thought that way. We thought like, okay, well, all black people are the same because it's like, well, if we only us, they'll just crush us. So now we got to connect to all black people. And when you connect to all black people, guess what you can say? There's more black people on earth than anybody else. That's true. There's more people with pigmented skin, dark skin, than anybody else. Melanated skin than anybody else. Right? That's true. Not all the same people, though. There's a whole lot of white folks. Not all the same people. We group the white people all together because they all treat us the same. Right? Then white people don't look at each other the same. I be talking to them where they be like, you know what I'm saying? What's your Welsh? Your last name? Welsh? Oh, no, my last name is Hano. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, this, that, another, da, da, da. And they be touching, okay, no, that's a Greek last name, or that's an Italian last name, or that's this, or that's that, that's that, and that. And you be looking at it, be like, oh, these people know they ain't the darn thing. They know they ain't the darn thing. Yeah, like with, uh, with Chinese, Vietnamese, yeah. Korean, and Japanese. All these people, they all know. They ain't sitting there walking around like, oh, yeah, we all the same. No, they ain't oh, we all Asian, so. Well, we you Korean, I'm Japanese. I knock your butt, I knock your darn block off if I catch you. <laughs> I remember what you did to my people. Hey, look at I remember what y'all did to my darn people. I knock your darn block off if I catch you slipping. How about the Japanese people scared right now? They see Trump over there talking to talking to North Korean king? 
Are you in Korean dick dictator? Dictator? Right? He see him talking over there? Them Japanese is scared. Right? Because at one time, the North Korean country and the South Korean country, they was all one. And they caused a little bit of havoc. You know what I'm saying? That thing used to be bad. Then all of a sudden, them boys split. Now, Japanese, the Japanese people can breathe a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So now the North Koreans, they shoot off these missiles every now and again. They call them tests. And guess what country they happen to just go right over? Japan. So Japan looking like, that's not cool. Talk to America. America, you got to get them. America say, oh, this is a good opportunity to sell some guns. So America go to South Korea and they say, hey, the North Koreans, they tripping over there. You should take this. You should let us build your defense system. So now America can get money from the whole deal. That thing been running. Trump get in town. He like, we going to end all that. Right? Now, I'm sure Trump got a whole different way of making money. He just, you know, playing a different angle than all the rest of the presidents. Right? But Trump say, let's end it. So now the Japanese are scared that if he ended and stopped making the South Koreans scared of the North Koreans, they might actually have a meeting. The first time the North Korean, uh, the North Korean president has, uh, like, set foot on the South Korean land was since Trump been in office. I think it was a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Why they beat so hard? You know what I'm saying? Well, you know what I'm saying? Really, you know what I'm saying? Us. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so you go in and you turn people against each other because it's better. They, they were strong. They made a lot of messes. You know what I'm saying? So you turn them against each other and then, you know what I'm saying? It's all types of stuff. But yeah, it's like the Japanese, you know, it's like, I think it's a World War II stuff. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? After that, you know what I'm saying? split. But since then, it's the first time it happened. What do you, how do you think that make you feel? You Japanese. You a Japanese government. government. I mean, I don't want that thing to have anything. No, I'll keep them boys apart. Boy, getting closer and closer to getting together. Right? A lot of stuff about to change. A lot of stuff about to change. You can just see this thing moving and darn shaking. All you got to do is look at it, keep your eyes open and see. I ain't saying this year, I ain't saying next year. I don't know when it's going to happen. I can just say, you know, I just like to see the little pieces move and shake. You know what I'm saying? You start seeing that thing, you know what I'm saying, lining up closer and closer to what we see in the book. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, it's going to get there. We just got darn be ready. All right? Any questions? All right, let's pray out.